No. So what? So uh, what kind of system do I have? Is it no solution inconsistent? Is it no solution consistent? You tell me. That's right. Option A. What happened to my pen? My color. Black. It's too far down. Oops. Okay, let's make it like this. Okay, so <laughs> any questions on this? You're right, there's no solution and is inconsistent. All right, so if there's no more questions or any questions at all, I'm just going to slide down to the next question. All right, we have another system of equations. They also want us to use substitution. I guess substitution is the preferred method for today. And then to state whether the system is inconsistent, consistent, or consistent and dependent. Okay, if I, um, I'm going to use uh, substitution. This one has smaller numbers, so I'm going to solve this one. I'm also going to solve for y because the y doesn't have any number uh, in, in front of it or behind it. So all I need to do is subtract the 2x from both sides. So I'm going to write down 2x plus y equals 11. Subtract 2x from both sides. This cancels. So y equals to negative 2x plus 11. And I'm going to substitute this on the eight equation, whatever I see y. So I'm going to do what I've been doing. So 8x plus, I'm going to replace I'm going to replace y for negative 2x plus 11 equals 44. I want to get rid of parentheses, so I'm going to distribute. So I'd have 8x minus 8x plus 44 equals to 44. This one is going to cancel out, so I'll have 44 equals to 44. So like I said, whenever the left side and the right side are the same, we have what? Did I get an answer, Deanna? That's right consistent dependent which is option A on your packet very good okay any questions if there's no questions about this I'm gonna move to the next slide all right solve the system by inspecting the graph of the equations okay in order for me to be able to solve this I need to first put each one of them solve for y. So I'm going to solve, start with the first one. If I'm solving for y, my first step, first let me write it down. x woo, plus 4y. That's a plus, guys. <laughs> solving for y, my first step is going to be subtract x from both sides. Then this cancels, so I have 4y equals, I'm going to want to put dx first because I want it in the y equals mx plus b first. Because if these are lines, I want to have them on, on the equation of the line form. Then my next step is divide by 4. I'm going to do it separately. This cancels, so y equals to negative. I'm going to pull out that 1 and write it this way. It's easier to see. And right here, I'm going to need to simplify to 3 over 2. Good. I'm going to do the next one, and then we can go ahead and graph them. Next one, I have 4x minus 4y equals negative 4. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. 
negative 4y, like I said, is in my best interest to put the 4x first. And I'm going to divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4, divide by negative 4. This cancels out, so y equals 2. This also cancels out to 1. I don't need to write the 1. And this cancels out the 1. I need to write the 1. So I have y equals x plus 1. Okay. Where is it? Okay. I'm going to use the graphing calculator to show you guys. To show you, yes, to show you guys how do you graph it in your calculator. Okay, so you want to be, let me, okay, you want to be on your y equals, which can be found right here. Okay, so they're both on my y equals. So then uh, I'm going to, I like to put, whenever I have a fraction, I like to put it in parentheses. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, but I like to do it that way. So that's my system. So I got 1 divided over 4, which is divided by 4, x minus, I'm going to do again parenthesis, 2, okay? And then I press down so I can write down my other equation, my other function, if you will, x plus 1, okay? And then you just hit graph. Oh, hold on, I need to change my window. Okay, there you go. Now, if you want to know uh, what is this point here where they crossing, for, for those of you who doesn't know how to do it, I would suggest you get a pen and paper and write down my, step, my steps. So I'm going to do second, trace, you got that? Five for intercept, and then I'm going to press enter three times. One, two, three. So my intersection is at negative two, negative one, which is the answer to my system of equations. Are we good on this? How to solve this on the calculator? Which, by the way, means that all the other system of equations that we have been doing, you can solve it on your calculator. All you need to make sure is that your uh, equations are solved by y. So once you solve them by y, you just need to put them on the calculator, do the step that I just did, and that's it. Okay, so my answer was, oops, I went down to the step. Hold on. My answer was <laughs> pen. Okay, I is in red. I do not want red. Sorry, you guys. Uh, in color, oh, I like this baby blue right here. Negative two, negative one, which if you can see is right here. That point is negative two, negative one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not clear clear on your graph to see that point, so it, it serves you best if you do it on your calculator. And this is option C on your packet. Okay, I'm going to pass down the baton to my fellow racetrack <laughs> teammate. <coughs> Excuse me. And I see you guys next time. All right. <clears throat> so if you if you're already here, we both are a little sick. So <laughs> thanks God we don't do it like life life only online life. Nobody of you guys gonna get infected by us. Okay. Um, moving on to question eleven. So 
first of all, in question 11, I noticed this morning when I was doing the problems myself that there is a big hiccup in there. And if you already tried to solve this, you probably did not find the correct answer. So if you noticed, I changed this problem to be, uh, um, let me make sure where's my pen, seven. So if you just want to switch this out on uh, your packet, I changed this numbers. Otherwise, our solutions are not um, matching. Okay, so that's the only adjustment I did. I don't like the baby blue, so I'm going to change it to, <laughs> to uh, a darker blue. Okay, nothing against blue. Um, let's solve the uh, first equation for y because I also wanted to graph it. And like uh, Vanina said, when we are graphing, we always need to have y, y all by itself. So 2x less than negative 3y, solving it for y, dividing both sides by a negative 3. On this side, y is by itself, and who can tell me what's going to happen when I'm dividing by a negative number? <clears throat> There's like one additional thing that you guys had to learn for inequalities when you are dividing by a negative number, multiplying or dividing by a negative number. What happens? Okay, that was the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> which is the sign flips. Yay. Okay, we got it. When you're dividing by a negative number, the sign flips. And over here, we have negative 2 over 3x. Okay, this looks kind of ugly, so I'm going to just rewrite it by moving the y to the left side. So as you guys see, the, the sign points at the y, so when I'm rewriting it with y first, the sign still needs to point at the y. So I'm not really switching the sign, I'm just rewriting it. And then negative 2 over 3. So I solved my first inequality for y. Now let me solve my second inequality for y. 2x minus 3y greater than or equal to 7. Good luck. Okay. Um, to solve for y, I am going to subtract 2x from both sides, which leaves me with negative 3y greater than or equal to, decide to write the negative 2x first, and then plus 7. Last step, dividing by a negative 3. Again, I am dividing by a negative 3, so I should flip the sign y is uh, less than or equal to now, and the negative over negative is a positive, to, so 2 over 3x, and then minus 7 over 3. Okay, so I got my two equations, which is, let me use a different color real quick. Right here, this was my first inequality, and this is my second inequality. So I am going to graph this now on my calculator. <clears throat> um, maybe I should write down those real quick because if I'm switching screens, then I'm not able to see this anymore. So give me just one second. Okay, let's switch to the calculator. Right over here. And let me just um, clean my screen real quick. So I'm going to clear those two equations that Vanina was using before and my history. Okay, there we go. All clean. So when I want to graph, again, you're hitting y equals right up here in the corner. And then my first inequality and um, Right over here at the end, you can go with the cursor all the way to the left to actually use the feature for inequalities. The less than one, you keep on hitting enter until you see you see how those signs are switching. Right now, this triangle means greater than, and the one that is shaded below means less than. 
So for this first one, I'm going to type in, I need the less than symbol. And then I have negative 2 over 3. And I can do the same as Vanina did, if you may want, using parentheses. For the first negative sign, you should always use this one down here, or the calculator gives you an error. And 2 over 3 is the same as 2 divided by 3. Then I got my x. So I finished with my first inequality. Now I'm going to set up my second one. In this case, I also have a less than or equal to symbol. Unfortunately, there's no different symbol for um, less than and less than or equal to. So you need to use for both of them the same. But I hope you know when you're actually graphing it, the one that is just the less than symbol, which is the first equation, gets a dotted line. And the other one, which is the less than or equal to symbol, gets a just straight line. Okay, now let's type it in. Um, two divided by three x and then minus seven divided by three. Okay, now we can graph it. And you see how it's shading for me. And the solution to the system should be the shaded area that is shaded by both of the equations, which is the triangle right down here. If you look at your packet, and this is not the correct answer like the packet says, because remember, I had to change um, the uh, equations a little bit. This now is solution D for the system of inequalities. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So right here, this should be a solution. Oops, I need to change back to my pen. D. <clears throat> Are there any questions on how to graph inequalities? If you uh, do not feel comfortable with the calculator, you can also graph it yourself. I hope you know how to do that. So for example, if I wanted to graph the first one, it doesn't have a y-intercept, so I would start with my y-intercept at zero. Let me change back to black right here. And from there, I will count my slope, which is rise over run, so negative 2 over 3. My rise is negative 2. I'm going 2 down and 3 to the right, right here. And this one is the one that doesn't have the equal bar underneath. So this one, this one is a dotted line. Dotted line right there. And then it says the numbers that are shaded are less than. Y is less than. So right here, the numbers that are less than are below. So I would have to shade the area below. And then with my second equation, let me use a different color. Um, how about green? Okay, I start with my y-intercept, which is this last number. Uh, seven over negative seven over three is a little hard to graph, but you can always convert it into a decimal or into a mixed number. This is about so my y-intercept is. Um, the three goes into seven two times and one third left. So about negative two one third. That is on the y axis, negative two and one third is about right here. From there, you're gonna count your slope, which is this number two over three. So which means two up. From here, I need to go exactly two units up. So that brings me one unit, two unit. And then three to the right, one, two, three. So I'm right here. So this one has this equal bar on the knees, which means it's a straight line, not dotted. And then it says y is less than or equal to. So the numbers that are less than right here is below. So I will be shading it below. And my solution is where you see the two colors on top of each other, 
which would be this area with the two colors. So that will be the solution. <clears throat> so we did it two different ways, either one time graphing by hand and one time using the calculator. If there's no questions, I'm moving on to a number 12. This is a word problem. So one number is four less than a second number, and twice that second number is two less than four times the first number. Find the two numbers. So what I would do first is I first would name my variables. So I'm, I'm going to have two different things here, two different numbers, right? So I'm going to call my first number um, first number, I'm going to call that x, that's going to represent my x, and my second number going to represent my y. So now I, I have to come up with two different equations to be able to solve the system. So let me read the first sentence again. It says one number, so that's my x, is four less than a second number. The one number is four less than the second number. So x equals y minus four. And if I read my second sentence, I have another statement that says twice the second number. So that means nothing else than two times my second number is two less than four times the first. So four times the first number, that was x, minus two, two less. Whenever you hear two less, three more, you should always write it at the end so you don't mess up your sign. Okay, I got my two equations, so now I can solve the system, and I am going to use substitution because this one is already isolated for x. I'm going to plug in this for x into the second equation. So 2y equals 4, um, and for x we have y minus 4, minus 2, and solving for y, 2y equals distributive property, 4y minus 16 minus 2. Okay, now we can combine those two numbers. 4y minus 18. We're solving for y, so let's bring this over to the other side by subtracting 4y from both sides. That gives me negative 2y is equal to negative 18. Dividing by negative 2 on both sides. So y equals positive 9. We found the y value. We are plugging it back in. And again, I'm choosing the first one <clears throat> because that one looks simpler, less numbers. And for y, I'm going to plug in a 9 minus 4. So x equals 5. In, uh, in regards to the problem, that means that my first number is 5 and my second number is 9. And if you look at your packet, that should be a... Let me see my packet. That should be A. Okay. Are there questions? Nope, okay. Let's go to the next one. So another word problem. Um, again, just the, the concept you know, is the same. Just the, 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 you know, what they're talking about in the problem might sound a little bit different, but again, you're gonna be uh, uh, required to solve this by using systems of linear equations. So let's try to come up with two equations and first of all, label our X and Y value. So the Family Fine Arts Center charges $24 per adult and $13 per senior citizen for its performances. On a recent weekend evening, when 473 people paid admission, the total received were $7,733. How many of the people who paid were senior citizens? Okay, 
we have senior citizens and we also have adults. Let me call X um, represents the adult and then Y is going to represent our senior citizen. Senior. All right, so we labeled our variables. Now let's try to come up with one of the equations. We know that these two went to a art performance and they sold a total ticket of 473 people or 473 people came to the event, which means if we have the adults and we add the seniors, we should have the total number of people that came to the event. That could be our first equation. And then the second one, because we are given some um, price values of each ticket, could be the 24 was per adult. And if we add the 13 per senior citizen, we should get the total amount that we earned on that day or that they made on that day, which was $7,733. So we have two equations. Again, I am going to use substitution. And to be able to do that, I would have to solve this one either for x or for y. I'm going to solve it for x. So x plus y equals 473. So I'm subtracting y from both sides leaves me with x equals negative y plus 473. So this is my equation that I can use to substitute for x into the second equation right here. 24 <clears throat> negative y plus 473 plus 13y is equal to $7,733. Okay, using distributive property to uh, eliminate the parentheses, we get negative 24y, and now you guys get to help me again. What is 24 times 473? Don't let me hang now. Do we get some answers here? Oh, that's a big number. Uh, so we got 11,352. You all got the same number, so I believe it's right. And then we continue with the plus 13y, which equals 7,733. Okay, focusing, we are solving for y, so we can combine these two, which have a y value, negative 24 plus 13, that should be a I'm waiting on you guys, but I think it is negative 11. Plus 11,352 is all equal to 7,733. Okay, so subtracting this from both sides, 3, 5, 2, uh, leaves me with negative 11y equals, and that is, should be a negative because the larger number is bigger, 3,619. Please correct me if I'm wrong. And the last step, divide by negative 11 on both sides. But this one I can do on by, my own, by myself, so please help me with this one. What you get if you're dividing negative 3,619 by a negative 11? Okay, I got somebody saying a negative and a negative makes a positive, so 329. So we got our y value and the question only asks us for the senior citizens and by coincidence the y is the senior citizens so we are actually done here. 
the 329 should be your answer for the senior citizens. If you had happened to have to solve it for X, then you would have to go further and plug it back in. But in our case, they only wanted to know the senior citizens, which is 329. And the correct answer is D. Okay, please uh, let me know if you have any questions. I know especially the word problems are hard to set up, but if you do a couple of them, you will see that the setup is always the same. So if you follow these steps, you should be fine. I believe we have like one more of those. So <clears throat> let's try this one together. The first step was to label our variables. So I'm going to write X and Y here. And you guys are going to tell me what is going to be your X and what is going to be your Y. I'm going to read the problem for you and you can think about it. There were 35,000 people at a ball game in Los Angeles. The days received were 189,000. How many people paid $11 for reserved seats and how many paid $4 for general admission? So please type in what you would label your X pertaining to this problem. Okay, your X, we got some answers here, is the reserved seats, that's good. Reserved seats and your Y, what you would call your Y, your Y is then the general admission. Nice job. Admission. Okay, now we have to come up with our first equation where we somehow add the two together and then get like a total amount. So type in what you would use for first equation to come up with a simple equation of adding the two different um, seat options or ticket options to get like a total amount. Okay, we got an answer here, but that's um, not quite yet because if you're adding the, the two tickets together, which is just an amount of tickets, you should not get a dollar amount, right? So if you're adding the two different types of tickets together, you should get the total number of people that went to the event because each person would have would have purchased the ticket, right? So X plus Y equals 35,000. And then the equation with the dollar amount, you would get by adding those prices in because they are charging $11 for the reserved seats, which represents X, and then $4 for the general admission, which is Y, and that should give you the total amount of money that they earned during this event. Okay, you see, similar to the other one, just that this, this is a different game. The first one was a art event and this one is a ball game. We got our two equations. Let's manipulate this one to be able to use substitution. So I am going to solve for x. x equals, I'm bringing the y over, which makes this a negative y plus 35,000. I have to cut out my steps a little bit because my slide is small for all this calculation and this big numbers. So I got my first equation and I am going to plug this in for x into the second equation. 11 times negative y plus 35,000. Continuing with my equation plus 4y equals 189,000. Distributing the 11 negative 11y, what is 11 times 35,000? There's a plus, I know that. What do you got? Oh, 
Okay, guys. Yeah, there we got some answers. Um, 385,000. 385,000, okay, plus 4y equal to 189,000. Solving for y, so negative 11y plus 4, that gives me a negative 11. <laughs> okay, what is negative 11 plus 4? That should be a negative 11y plus 4y. Yeah, we got a negative 7. Making sure you guys know your signs. And then <clears throat> we are going to uh, subtract this big number from both sides. What do you guys get on the right side if you're subtracting 189,000 minus? 385,000, a negative, thank you for helping out here, these are some big numbers, okay, we got negative 196,000, almost there, uh, now we're still focusing on y, so we have to divide by a negative 7, what do you get if you divide this big number by a negative 7? 28,000. That sounds about right. All right. What does this mean pertaining to the problem? That means that there were 28,000 general admission tickets sold. Okay. But the question asks for both. So we have to go back and I am choosing the simple equation either this one right here or this one. This one is already solved for x, so I'm using this one to find my x value. Negative 28 plus 35,000. And what do you get if you do this? If you subtract these two numbers, you should get, for the reserve tickets, how many reserve tickets were sold? Seven thousand. Okay, nice job. Which means we have twenty-eight thousand for general admission and seven thousand for reserved seats. In your packet, that should be answer choice C. Thanks for the help, guys. Okay, if there's no questions, we're moving on. And I believe we are done with the, all the substitutions and eliminations. So with the systems, and now we are going to uh, do some factoring. So uh, this says factor, and I believe those questions might not be in order. So you have to figure out what factoring method to use. If you have 2x to the fourth power plus 12x to the third power, which is two terms and a plus sign, so that cannot be the difference of two squares, first of all, because difference implies a subtraction sign, what other options you have for factoring? It could be the sum of cubes, but this one definitely is not a cube. So I'm just gonna try to use GCF because when nothing works, and even if stuff works, you also you always should do try to pull out the GCF first. If I look at the numbers, 2 and 12, what is the greatest common factor of 2 and 12? Two. Good. And if I look at my axis, I got four axes here and three axes there. What is the greatest common that they both share? Waiting for the audience to answer, just in case you guys are wondering why there's silence. So x cubed, very good. Three of them, they have three of them in common, so x cubed. Now, if I'm using the GCF method, I have to divide each term by the GCF and write in parentheses what's left over. 
So if I have 2x4 and I'm taking out 2x cubed, I'm left with just 1x. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. And x cubed, I had x cubed, x cubed in the bottom, so it's gone. It's just 1. And 6 times 1 is still 6. So the answer to this factoring problem by using the method of pulling out the GCF is 2x cubed and then open parentheses x plus 6, which in your packet is answer choice A. Okay. So um, Vanina had to leave, but I got another guest star here. Let me give her or ask her if she would like to switch. Yay. So I'm introducing, um, this is Joni, and uh, she will do the next five factoring problems. Hi, guys. This is Johnny. Glad to be with you guys today. Let's see, so we're gonna continue on factoring, looking at number 16, factor the polynomial completely. All right, so we need two numbers. So this is a trinomial, there's three terms, and the leading coefficient is a one, so those tend to be a little easier to factor. So we just need two numbers that will multiply to give me negative 99 and add to give me two. So we definitely need two numbers and one of them is going to be negative. So let's see, two numbers that multiply to give me 99. Let's try nine and 11. Nine times 11 is 99, but one of them needs to be negative. So 9 plus negative 11 will give me negative 2, but negative 9 plus 11 will give me positive 2. So for my factors, I'm going to start with x and x. And so it's going to be x minus 9. I'm new to this. <laughs> <laughs> times x plus 11. And so that's my factored form. Um, a hint for when you're doing these, if you ever want to check and see if you have the right factors, you can always go back and FOIL it, and if which is first, outer, inner, last. And if you do that and you get the original polynomial, then you'll know that you have the correct factors. Sounds good. Okay, so that one wasn't so bad. Let's go to number 17. Okay, so factor this polynomial completely. This also is a trinomial. There's three terms. So like Deanna said before, you always want to look for a greatest common factor first. And number 16, we didn't have one. Um, but here we actually do have a greatest common factor. So let's start with our coefficients, we've got 3, negative 9, and negative 30. So can someone tell me the greatest common factor? Just looking at the coefficients, so between 3, 9, and 30. Can anyone tell me what the greatest common factor would be between just 3, 9, and 30? Three, awesome. So we're gonna write three, that's part of our GCF. We also have some y's in our terms. So this is y cubed, y squared, and y. So the number of y's that they all have in common, the most, the highest number they all have in common would be just one y. So my GCF is three y. So we're gonna write 3y here, and now we're ready to divide the GCF out of every single term. And then whatever we have remaining, we're going to write in parentheses. So 
3y cubed divided by 3y, the 3 is a cancel, and so y cubed over y leaves me with y squared, and then negative 9 divided by 3 is going to give me negative 3, and then y squared divided by y will just leave me with y, and then negative 30 divided by 3 is negative 10, and then y divided by y cancels. So now I have my partially factored form, but I can continue now and work on factoring this new trinomial here. So um, this trinomial in parentheses has a leading coefficient of 1, so we just think of two numbers that will multiply to give me negative 10 and add to give me negative 3. So let's see, factors for 10, let's work with 5 and 2. All right, so they need to multiply to give me negative 10. So one of these numbers needs to be negative, but they need to add up to give me negative 3. So 5 plus negative 2 will give me positive 3. But I need for, I need to get negative 3, so I'm going to say negative 5 plus 2 will give me negative 3. So I'm going to have y minus 5 times y plus 2. And then don't forget your 3y that we factored out in the beginning. And so now we have our factored form here. And like I said before, if you're not quite sure, you can always distribute and multiply it all together to make sure that you get your original polynomial that was given to you. Are there any questions? Looks like you guys are doing great with factoring. So let's move on to number 18. So here we want to look for, see if factor the polynomial completely, we want to see if we have any greatest common factors. So it almost looks like we could, but this 13 put the little monkey wrench in the equation. So um, 20, 13, and 15, there is no greatest common factor other than 1. And then there's an x squared, there's x and y, and there's a y squared here. So there's no common factors between these three. So now what we're going to do... So the way that I work these out, um, and actually, let me, give me just one second. I do that. You do that. 
All right, so we're going to start off by multiplying the first and third term by the 20. So let's see here. I'm going to just rewrite my polynomial. Okay, so I'm multiplying this first one by 20 and then this one by 20. Okay, so here I have 400 because 20 times 20 is 400. X squared minus 13XY minus 15 times 20 is going to give me 300 Y squared. All right, so now I can start setting up my factoring using 20x and 20x. And now I need to get two factors for 300 that will multiply to give me negative 300, but add to give me negative 13. So let's see here. So we've got, so we know that 30 and 10, 5 and 6, 5 and 2. So since you guys are knocking it out with factoring, Anyone want to help us out with what our two numbers will be to continue our factoring problem? These are really nice big numbers. All right, so anybody got one? All right, let's see. So it looks like we can use 25 and 12, but one of them will have to be negative. So because to multiply, you get a negative 300, and to add, we need to get negative 13. So we want to make the 12 negative. So we're going to put the larger number first. Oh, because negative 13. Thank you, Deanna. So we need a negative 13, so the 25 is negative, and the 12 is positive. So we're going to put the 12 first. Okay, and it doesn't matter because they're both 20x, so I'm going to try to fix my messy writing here. Ah! Oh, how do I get to that? Oh, wait, no. Oh, okay. Got you. Thank you. You guys are my guinea pigs. This is my first time on here. Okay, so I'm going to erase this. I'm going to get my pen back. Nope, one more. There we go. Okay, so we're going to say minus 25y and then plus 12y. Because remember, we had 300y squared, so we need to have y's here and here. So now, since we multiplied, by 20, it's in the very beginning, we need to divide by the factors. So we're going to divide everything here by 5, which is one of my factors for 20, and everything here by 4, which is my other factor for 20. So now to clean this up, 20x divided by 5 is going to give me 4x 
negative 25y divided by 5 will be negative 5y. And then 20x divided by 4 is going to give me 5x. And then 12y divided by 4 is going to give me 3y. Bingo. Sounds good. Any questions about number 18? And the answer on your paper and your review sheet is D. I don't know if I gave the letters for the previous ones, but we can tell you that a little later. So just in case you need the other ones, number 16 was letter C. And number 17 was letter D. All right. Okay. Fact of the polynomial by grouping. So that's when we have four different terms. So we've got xy minus 5yz plus 9x minus 45z. So you want to start off by grouping them, which is why it's called factoring by grouping, like this. Okay, so we're going to start by factoring out the GCF for the first group. So we've got xy minus 5yz. The only thing that they both have in common is 1y. So I'm going to factor out y. And when I do that, remember you're basically dividing everything by that GCF. So here you'll have just x. And then when you factor out, divide out a y here, you'll be left with negative 5z. And now we want to do the same thing with this second group. So we have 9x, negative 45z. So the GCF between 9x and negative 45z is going to actually be 9. Now, a something to kind of check yourself as you do factoring by grouping your goal is to get what I call twins. So when I factor out a GCF from the second group, I want the same thing I have here in the first group to be here. So if I factor out a 9, I'll be left with x. And when I divide 9 here, I'm left with negative 5z, which is great. I've got my twins here x minus 5z, x minus 5z. Okay, so now between these two large expressions here, what do they both have in common? x minus 5z. So you're technically factoring that out. And then whatever is left over is in your second factor, y plus 9. OK, so we are actually done here. We have now factored by grouping. And like I said before, if you're ever in doubt, you can always multiply through to get to check your answer. And so the letter answer for this will be letter D on your review sheet. Are there any questions about how we factored by grouping here? All right. So let's do another one. Can you guys hear me? Because it looks like a few people were having some connection issues. So let me know if you can hear me talking now before we move on. I want to make sure you guys are hearing and seeing everything. You're hearing good. And so you're seeing too? <laughs> Yay. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Okay, so number 20, factor by grouping. So, got our four terms. Now, we're going to do this the same way. The only thing that I like to always do, notice we have a negative here in the middle. I like to include that in my second group 
so that I will factor it out and it'll all work out later. So we need to get the GCF between the first term. No, go on because it's 25. But we were checking to see to make sure that there was not a GCF in our entire expression. So is there a greatest common factor between all four terms? And there actually is not, not this time. But you always want to check that because sometimes it will be and you'll forget. And you can sometimes fix it later, but it's best to factor it out from the very beginning. So we're now going to group our terms. So we need a GCF between the first term. So between 30x squared and negative 12x. Can anyone tell me what the GCF for my first binomial is? Three. Good. Very good. Three. And then what about my x's? Do I have a greatest common factor between my x? How many x's do they have in common? They've got this one has x squared and this one has x, so our total GCF will actually be 3x. Okay, so we're going to write that down and then we're going to divide both of these by 3x. So 30x squared divided by 3x is going to be 10x and then negative 12x divided by 3x is negative 4. So we had a larger GCF. So here's what's happening. So if we notice here, we actually could have factored a little bit more out here. So because you notice 10 and 4 actually have a GCF. So this is okay. We can see this is a common thing that we can we do when we're working these out. So we can see how we can notice our possible mistakes and clean up the problem as we go. So can anyone think of maybe the greatest common factor? Three is a common factor, but not quite the greatest. So actually six would be the greatest because between 10 and four, their greatest common factor is two. So the 2 times the 3 would actually give me 6x. So I'm going to revise this a bit. But thank you, because we all were thinking the same thing. All right. Oh, yeah, this 3 here. Thank you. OK. So 6x, okay, let's go from there. So we divide 6x in both terms. We're going to write it here. And then 30x squared divided by 6x will give me 5x. And then negative 12x divided by 6x will give me negative 2. And you see how we do not have a common factor between 5x and 2 other than 1. So that's how we know we factored out the greatest common factor from the beginning. So now on my second binomial, what's my GCF here? Between 25x and 10. Can anyone tell me what that would be? That's five. All right. So notice, remember I said from the beginning I took group in my negative because I'm going to factor it out at this point. So I'm going to factor out negative five. So I'm going to write negative five. Okay. So when I do that, 
what's going to be left? And remember before, we want twins. So I want to hopefully get 5x minus 2 in here. And if I do, I'm doing great. So negative 25x divided by negative 5 is going to give me positive 5x. Good. And then 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. There are my twins. So I'm doing good. Now I'm going to write down my twins here. Basically, 5x minus 2 is what this and this have in common. And when I factor that out, what's left over? 6x minus 5. And so the letter answer is letter A. All right. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna let Deanna hop back on the mic. <laughs> all right. Okay, here we go. Question number 21. There are 25 questions on the test. I don't know what took us so long today, but we just wanted to make sure that everything is understood. If, especially if you were struggling on the first test, you cannot you know, waste more points, so you should do very well on the second one. So this is another factoring problem, and factoring is very important because you will need factoring every other science class there is from now forth. So I don't want to scare you guys, I just want to motivate you to really grasp the factoring concept. So I don't know for you, but for me, if I look at this problem, I see that the first term and the last term are perfect squares because 25x squared could be split into 5x and 5x. And I also see that the 81 is a perfect square, which could be split into 9 times 9. So if I have something like that happen, then I have a perfect square trinomial, which it's easy to factor if I know that it works. The only other thing I have to check is that this middle number, and there's like a little formula, usually these are called um, a squared, um, in this case, minus b x and then plus c, the constant. So the formula is if you have 2ab and that, I mean, yeah, wait, this one is the b in this case and this one is the a, sorry, but the whole thing is considered in this form. But if the 2ab is equal to this middle number to the 90, then we have this form of a uh, perfect um, square trinomial. So 2 times our a in this case is 5x and our b in this case is 9. If we multiply all this together, sorry, there's x messing, then we have 10, and 10 times 9 is 90x, so it works. <clears throat> Which means, instead of having to do all the steps of multiplying the first and the last, and then, then, we could just write our empty sets of parentheses, square root this first term, which gives us a 5x and a 5x, um, and then square rooting the last term, which was a 9 and a 9, and this sign basically determines what both of them, the sign that both of them are going to get. In this case, is a minus. Um, if you're not sure, you could use falling to check that you get back to the original problem. But there's another way of writing this too, because the, these are exactly the same. A shorter version of writing these is like that, because the square down here indicates that these happen to be two times. If you use another factoring method and you cannot identify this as a perfect square trinomial, then you should still get the same answer. And in your packet, question number 21 is B. Okay. Now, this one, because I see two terms and it's a minus sign, it could be two things. It could be the difference of two squares or the difference of cubes. So this is not a square and it's not a square. So I'm I'm thinking this is the difference of cubes. And for the sums and differences of cubes, you have two formulas. 
which you will have to know by heart because you are not allowed to take any cheat sheets inside the test. So the formula for the difference, um, the difference of cubes, I hope some of you already know it, of cubes is a minus b and then a squared plus a b plus b squared where this is considered a and this is considered b and then the formula for the sums of cubes looks similar but it has the plus and then a minus and then a plus again okay so in this case we have the difference of cubes because the cube root of x cubed is just x and the cube root of 125 is 5 so we're using the difference of cubes formula and we just plugging in our values so we said this is representing our A and this is representing our B. And X from the formula minus our B is 5. Continuing A again is X, but this time it has to be squared. Plus we're multiplying A and B together, which gives us X5 or writing it properly 5X. It's multiplication. It's commutative. You can switch them. And then... Uh, plus b squared, so our b is 5, 5 squared is 25. So what I like about these, you don't have to do a lot of work, but you are required to know these two formulas. And on the test, you will either get either one of these. So it could be the difference or the sums. So you need to know both. Are there any questions? Okay, let's move on to question number 23. This one is actually a, um, an equation. So not only do we have to factor, but we also need to solve for the factors. If I am looking at this problem, I cannot come up with a factoring method out other than I notice that the x squared and the 5x have something in common what they're both sharing is they both have an X. So I'm going to factor by GCF first and then I see from there. I'm factoring out an X and I'm left with an X for the first term and 5 for the second term and all that is equal to 0. Now I think I'm done because there's nothing else I could factor. So when I have an equation I need to set those two factored parts equal to 0. My first part is the x in front, which is equal to 0. And then the second one is x plus 5, which is equal to 0. Both of them I have to solve for x. So this one is already done. And this one I am subtracting 5 from both sides. So I'm getting x equals negative 5. And my answer should be uh, um, usually the uh, there's no right or wrong wrong way of which number to write first, but you kind of need to a little bit, for, uh, especially if you have multiple choice, to find your answer. So in this case, it's written 0, negative 5, but I probably would have written it negative 5, 0 in descending order, but those are both um, the right answer. And in your packet, this is answer choice B. All right, now question 24 also is a factoring equation. In this case, I would use um, the method of factoring trinomials because there's no coefficient other than one in front. I can go ahead and write my empty sets of parentheses. I'm going to square root my first term, which leaves me with an x and an x. I am going to bring down my first sign, which is a plus. I multiply my signs together to give me the second sign, 
positive times a negative is a negative. And this method is good for people that never know where the sign goes. So if you use this rule, it always works out. And then you take in the last number and you don't have to worry about your signs anymore because you did them already. You only use the number 24 and you have to find the factors. If in here are different signs, the factors must subtract to give you the middle number, in this case, 5. If the signs are the same, for example, two positives or two negatives, then right here the factors must add. But in our case, we have different signs, so they must subtract to give us 5. Factors of 24, let me see, 1, 24, 2, 12, no, not good, um, 3, 8, okay, I think that works, 8 minus 3 would be 5. And if I'm doing my sign rule, I always write the larger of the two factors first, and I don't have to worry about my signs. They're always 100% correct. So this is the factored form. Again, I have it equal to zero, so I'm taking each part and setting it equal to zero individually. And I am solving for x, which means subtracting 8 from both sides which gives me x equals negative 8, and here adding 3 to both sides, which gives me x equals 3. Writing it as a solution, again, I would write the smallest number first, and then the bigger one, but in the packet it could be the opposite way. And where are we? We are here, negative 3. Oh, they wrote it the same way this time, so this is answer choice C. <clears throat> okay, this should be our last question for today. And um, looking at this problem, again, this is a trinomial and I do have a coefficient, but before I decide which method, I also see that they all share a common uh, factor. And the greatest common factor of these would be a um, 2, 2, I believe. So let's factor out 2 and rewrite the problem. Let's divide everything by 2. And we are left with 15d squared plus 34d divided by 2. I think that's 17d, and then plus 4 equals 0. Well, you can divide the 0 by 2, 2, which just leaves me with 0, but I just didn't want it to write so much. But that's what you basically do. You divide through by 2. So now, um, I, if I have an equation, I don't really have to worry about the GCF anymore because I can move it to the other side, and guess what's happening? It just disappears because 0 divided by 2 is 0. And now I can just focus on my um, factoring of this trinomial. So I do have a coefficient, so I'm using the method of multiplying the first by itself and the last of this trinomial by the first. I'm rewriting the problem. And I should get 15 times 15 should be 225, which is not too important because in the next step you are going back to the original number anyway. And this is important, the 4 times 15, which gives me 60. Now I write my empty sets of parentheses and I'm doing the same steps as I did in the previous problem where I did not have a coefficient. So square rooting this, I'm going back to 15d and 15d. I'm bringing down my first sign, multiplying the signs together. Positive times positive is positive, and finding the factors of this last trinomial number, which now I got the same signs, you see, so my factors must add to give me 17. So this is a little bit tough when I have to find those factors. So, um, because of time restraints, I'm just going to give them to you. They are 12 and 5. 12 times 5 is 60, and 12 plus 5 is 17. But don't get frustrated. Sometimes it takes a little bit, but eventually you will find the factors. 
And if there are none, then uh, you might end up with a factoring problem that is prime or not factorable. But in our case, we don't even have that option, I believe. So we do need to um, find our factors. Remember, we multiplied by 15 in the beginning. So we have to divide by the factors of 15. And there's only one way. So factors of 15, immediately I think of 3 and 5. And I see this side is divisible by 3, and this side is divisible by 5, which gives me the 15. So dividing by 3 leaves me 5d plus 4, and then 3d plus 1 equal to 0, setting each part individually equal to 0, and solving for d. So subtracting 4, 5d equals negative 4, dividing by 5, negative 4 over 5, I cannot reduce that. So that will be my first answer. And over here, subtracting 1, so 3d equals negative 1, dividing by 3. So this should be my second answer and then writing it as a solution set. So uh, again, they might wrote it in a different order. Let me check. Um, no, they wrote it the same way like me. So negative 4 over 5, negative 1 third, this would be answer choice D. Okay, so this was question number 25. I know this was long. Thank you so much for sticking with us. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some quick, some quick test info. So the test already opened today and it will be open all the way until next Monday until 9 p.m. and that's ve the very, very last. And remember the testing center closes at 9 p.m. So because you are allowed to have two hours to take this test, you should be there at least at 7 p.m. or they won't let you in to take the test. That is the latest you can show up next Monday to take your test. You're allowed to bring a graphing calculator but only the TI-83 or TI-84, nothing above would be allowed for you to have. And obviously pencils, you need your VID photo ID, otherwise they won't let you take it. You need to be able to identify yourself. They might ask you for the CRN of this number. Every class has a unique number, which in this case is the 1420-1. And this class um, is MAT-1033C. And they also ask you for your uh, instructor, so you could either use my name or Dr. Pedoni's name. Down below is the hours of operation, so you can figure out which day and time you would come to the Osceola Testing Center. And I'm sorry, I know it's inconvenient for some people who do not live close to the Osceola Testing Center, but this was in the uh, um, class section when you guys register for the class. So there's nothing that I can do to set you guys up at a different campus. You will have to come here. Um, again, thank you so much. You can email me all week, uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session or group sessions if you feel the need to practice a little bit more for the test. Remember to do your online review. Uh, for test two, which could earn you extra credit points towards your test. And you can find that in Blackboard under test reviews and final. And other than that, I wish you guys good luck and have a good day. You know what? I think it already shut down because it was only... Yeah, it was only reserved until two because I don't see I don't see nothing no more on my screen. Uh... 
Oh, wait, 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 wait. So I'm just going to wait if you guys have questions and you want to type it into the box. So I will stick around a little longer to answer any questions because I see there are still people logged in. And if not, you can just um, log out and 